Hello and welcome back to the Style and Beauty Doctor here on YouTube. And in today's video, I'm going to be making very subtle moves as to not reveal the lace of this wig because, you know, I'm still a little green about putting it on, you know what I'm saying? I put a little... Anyhow, <laughs> today I'm going to be trying some products from Cetaphil. Cetaphil is a brand that I probably have not tried a product in probably about 10 years. I'm going to give that as a guesstimate. Don't hold me to it. So we're going to see how I like the products, should you go out and get it, and more, so keep watching. All right, so yeah, I think it's been at least 10 years. It might be a little bit more. You know, growing up, I've had a skincare routine since I was probably about like nine or 10. You know, I was one of those kind of kids. <laughs> but in my 20s and like growing up with skincare, I never really liked Cetaphil because I felt like it was just like, ugh. <laughs> like there were just so many cooler products out there to try for me to like subject myself to like a dermatologist bland brand, right? But so much is being said, not necessarily about Cetaphil, but mostly CeraVe. And I did a quick overview on some CeraVe products, so make sure you check that out. I'll link it above and below. And I was like, you know what? Let me try this punk ass product. Let me see how it works and, you know, let y'all know the, a thing or two. So I actually picked up a number of items. I picked up the classic Cetaphil Gentle Skin Cleanser. I also picked up the Cetaphil Pro Derma Control Oil Removing Foam Wash. I also picked up the Cetaphil Pro Derma Control Oil Absorbing Moisturizer with sunscreen, broad spectrum SPF 30. And I also picked up the Cetaphil Gentle Oil Free Makeup Remover. Now, I, I, when I was ordering this from the Target website, you know, sometimes stuff, the print just is so small. I thought this said oil makeup remover. <laughs> I didn't quite see the free part, but you know, we'll still talk about it because I did try it out. So let's get started. So first up, we're gonna be talking about the Gentle Skin Cleanser, which over the years, I'm sure you've heard many beauty magazines, beauty websites recommend this. You might hear that dermatologists recommend this a lot. You might even have a dermatologist that recommended this cleanser to you. And I can kind of see why, because there aren't many ingredients in here and most of them aren't ingredients that are typically known to be irritants, but we'll talk a little bit, put a little push pin in there. We'll talk about that. It's fairly accessible. I don't think that you can go to any like Walmart, Walgreens, Rite Aid, you know, whatever CVS, whatever the national chains are or the local mom and pop kind of like drugstores. The likelihood of you not finding this anywhere in the United States of America is very slim, you know? This is fairly accessible and it's fairly inexpensive. I went and got the travel size because I already knew that this was not going to be a staple in my routine and let me just get the small one and you know keep it pushing. So I paid me about $3.99 or so for the smaller bottle. Um, let's cue to past me trying this out and you know giving you a bit of a on skin demo. Hello, and this is not past me because I had to redo these clips. So this is actually future me in reference to the last clip of me that you saw. But um, because of the towel that I was using, the fibers got in between my eyes and it was very distracting. So I was like, let me redo these clips. So some of that first time trying it in a while essence is going to be gone from this clip because it has been several days and I've used this more than once since then. Um, but I'll try to recreate some of that magic, you know? So this gentle skin cleanser, you can use either with water or without water. When you use it without water, it says to apply a liberal amount of the cleanser and gently massage into the skin, remove excess with a soft cloth, leaving a thin transparent film. I would think that maybe that method, if your skin is feeling, you know, a little bit more on the drier side, you know, you might want to try that. I'm going to use the one with water and with that you apply the cleanser, gently massage into the skin and then you rinse. So I'm going to do just that. Now this, <laughs> this still has that like, it's not heavily fragranced. I think this might call itself, um, let's see, is there any fragrance in here? It's fragrance free, but you know, sometimes things can have, there's no like fragrance added, 
but things can still have like a it has it still has that like doctor's office kind of like you know it's not bad it's not good kind of smell um but let's see let's get that in there it's a lot of slip feels really nice hmm feels nice to massage it on the skin now clearly i'm here in my bedroom because the light is way better and i have much more room to to work with than i do if i took this into the bathroom um but with that comes a weird way that, <laughs> that i have to rinse and then we're gonna move on to <laughs> rinsing so this f doesn't feel like heavy or filmy or anything like that um let's rinse it off okay when you add the water it does kind of feel like you have like a lotion on your face Then we're gonna gently pat dry. That feels really nice. I do feel like a slight, like my skin feels great. I do feel like a slight, like a coating on my skin. I don't feel it like to the touch, but I can feel like, you know, my skin feels good. It feels, you know, supple. It doesn't feel stripped. And, and that's the thing, your cleanser should not make your skin feel squeaky clean. If it does, you are probably wearing, um, probably using the wrong cleanser. But I like how this feels, but kick it to the next me. <laughs> so yeah, nothing like to scream up and jump up about, about this, <laughs> this type of cleanser. It's pretty basic and I can kind of see why dermatologists recommend it a lot, especially for people with very sensitive skin until you kind of look at the ingredients a little bit more there's not much in here it's a water-based cleanser um so water is the first ingredient and then it has acetyl alcohol now a lot of times we hear alcohol and some of us think oh my god that's drying why is that in a product but there are different alcohols the acetyl alcohol is not something that is going to dry you out it's actually an emollient then you have the propylene glycol, um, and I'm looking at the notes here because, you know, I'm no cosmetic chemist. I actually just Googled this, and, you know, this is something that you are able to do um, yourself as well. Uh, propylene glycol is a hydrating ingredient, and, you know, it's good to see something hydrating in a cleanser. Now, we're looking good. We got some hydrating ingredients, and we got some emollients. We're looking good, right? And then we get to sodium lauryl sulfate. So, you know, there's also a sodium laureth sulfate. This is the laurel, L-A-U-R, I'll put the name on the screen so you can check it out. Um, but upon Googling, I went to Paula's Choice. Now, I know this can be a bit of a bias because Paula's Choice also creates products, but I like that the Paula's Choice website, you know, uses studies and they use research and they cite their sources. So I feel pretty good about that. If, you know, that's something that you don't feel pretty good about, that's fine. You know, you can do your own, you do your own research. Um, but this is rated as a poor ingredient. It's, it says it's a versatile ingredient composed of several non-volatile alcohols, functions primarily as a surfactant, but can also be used as a skin conditioning agent, emulsifier, and solvent. Sodium lauryl sulfate is one of the most sensitizing cleansing agents used in skincare products. In fact, it's considered a standard comparison substance for measuring the skin sensitization mouthful of other ingredients in fact in scientific studies when the researchers want to establish whether or not an ingredient is problematic for skin they compare its effect to that of sls an amount of two percent to five percent sodium lauryl sulfate can cause a sensitizing reactions for many people despite the sensitivity issue it is not the same as the dire and erroneous warnings floating around the web about this ingredient all of which have been debunked. Sodium lauryl sulfate isn't a great ingredient in terms of its impact on skin, but its effects are not detrimental to one's health. So, you know, you can draw your own conclusions, you know, from that information. This also contains sterile alcohol, which is not one of the drying alcohols. It's a fatty alcohol. Um, it's an emollient, and it also helps to keep the other ingredients in a formula intact. So things ain't just, you know, all flying all willy-nilly. Then the last few ingredients are parabens, which help to preserve the product. There has been a lot of incorrect information about parabens that were floating around, and it got so bad that brands had to start taking the parabens out of products and labeling things paraben-free, and then it turns out that parabens were okay, and now it's just like, and this is kind of why, like, 
when it comes to you know talking about ingredients sometimes i think sometimes as consumers we can kind of get ahead of ourselves i have a video coming up soon not quite sure if it's going to be uploaded before this one or um after this one but make sure you subscribe to the channel either way and turn your notifications on so you don't miss a thing but i'm gonna have a cosmetic chemist here on the channel talking about you know why certain ingredients are in products um because i think that sometimes we we get ahead of ourselves as consumers when it comes to ingredients and the chemists actually are like yeah but no there's a reason why a certain ingredient is in a skincare product so that will be interesting however now the thing with the sls in here the sodium laurel sulfate um i know it's you know it's not the best ingredient but it also you know according to the polish choice piece that i read and i will link it below so you can check it out as well um that it's not going to cause as much harm to one's health as you know you're seeing like some of these articles floating around the internet but obviously that is a you decision to make now for me i wouldn't continue using this and it's not because of the sodium laurel sulfate or anything else it was okay it was an okay cleanser I need a little bit more, you know? I need a little bit more. I'm, I'm not someone who I need like every little shishi foo foo thing in my skincare routine. I would, I would consider my routine pretty basic, you know, despite what I do for a living. And you can check out my basic AF skincare routine, uh, which I posted a couple of weeks ago. But I need a little bit more. This is a little boring for me. Um, I also feel that because I don't wear makeup every single day, but when I do wear makeup, I wear makeup. I don't think that this would probably be the best um, cleanser in my routine just because of my lifestyle. So it's a no for me personally, me, myself personally, but if it's a yes for you, let me know below. Next up, the Pro Derma Control Oil Removing Foaming Wash. Now, oil removing sounded so harsh to me to the point where i almost didn't pick this up to try it because i was just like so here's the thing i have oily skin and my mantra with oily skin is to balance and not obliterate the oil i find that people with oily skin tend to do the most and you know i don't like when you do the most don't do the most but people with oily skin tend to do the most in trying to dry out all the oil that what happens is that you dehydrate your skin, your skin freaks out, your skin is like, what, what do you ask is going on here, right? You see that your skin brings up your trini auntie. So to overcompensate for that dehydration, the skin produces, overproduces more oil. And then I find that you wind up in a counterproductive mess. Like it's like you were trying to get rid of the oil and then the skin is like, yo, we need some oil. Like what's happening? Now I need to produce more oil because I don't know what you're doing, you know? So tis the mess that can happen sometimes with oily skin. Don't, don't be trying to do the most and, and drying it out. Like oils aren't, a hundred percent bad like you want to balance but you also want to make sure that you're also hydrating your skin when you have oily skin which is a step that i think sometimes people miss because they think hydration or and and or moisturizing the skin means that it needs to be heavy and that it's going to weigh the skin down and cause more oil and that's just not true it's not true there's a lot of lightweight moisturizers out there but you know i talked about that in a separate video and then we also have a moisturizer here for oily skin that we'll talk about so back to this looking at the ingredients i didn't see anything that was alarming um most of this stuff that was in here came up as good on the Pola choice uh website um i did also look up the zinc co co see this is why i don't do <laughs> ingredients on camera because i'm over here trying to sound stuff out i will put it on the screen the zinc co keith sulfate so anyway that one um if you look up zinc sulfate it, you'll see things that are like ah but when you look up the zinc coquith sulfate, you'll, you'll see that this is a typical sulf, uh, surfactant that's put into um, particularly cleansers because what happens is it's able to attract the oil on your skin, um, bind it with water, and then you know wash it off. Now my explanation of that was very elementary. Like I said, I'm not a cosmetic chemist, and I'm glad that we're gonna have one on the channel because you know that person will be able to kind of talk through these things with us. I actually really liked this cleanser. I like that my skin felt balanced. Um, I like that it was gentle. Your skin, I'll say this again, your skin should not feel squeaky clean 
after you cleanse it. Because if your skin feels squeaky clean after you cleanse it, you might be using the wrong cleanser. <laughs> because squeaky clean can lead to that dehydration I talked about, and that dehydration and oily skin can, you know, freak the skin out and cause it to produce even more oil. So chill out, yo. I actually really like this cleanser. My my key thing with this was that I did like how it performed with my on my oily skin. Um, it's September. We're, it's still summer. Um, we're, we're going into fall. This is a, a cleanser that I would probably use going into fall, depending on what the weather's doing, because New York City fall can either be an extension of summer or it can be a very early and nasty winter. So you know, it's a toss up. Something like this, I tend to skip out on any oil control products when it gets cold out, because again, you run into that whole dehydration thing and you know, the skin, oily skin still needs to be hydrated. It still needs to be moisturized and you might need a, to up the ante on that if you live in a cold climate or you live someplace that has a cold season like New York City does or you know, anywhere in the Northeast or wherever, you know? But it is a great cleanser for oily skin. Let me know below, would you try this? Would you skip this? Comment below. So now next up, the Cetaphil Gentle Oil-Free Makeup Remover. So this is a makeup remover that also has some really nice antioxidants in it as well. I will link it below so that you can you know check out the ingredients and so on and so forth. Now I'm typically someone who likes to use either a cleansing oil or a cleansing balm. I thought this was an oil when I picked it up because my eyes just saw oil when I was ordering this from the Target app. And then when I when it actually got here, I was like, oh, it says oil free. So, you know, my bad. So I was a little like, oh, this is not going to work for the amount of makeup that I wear. Right. But I was presently surprised. So, you know, I'm going to put the clip up, you know, make sure you watch the screen of me taking my makeup off. It did take a little while. What works when you use a makeup remover like this is to use a cotton pad. You saturate the cotton pad with the product and then especially for areas where you have like waterproof makeup or like a liquid lipstick, you want to just pat it down, let it sit just to kind of loosen it up um, so that you're not, you know, tugging and pulling because that, that's not good for your skin or your eyes. And then it actually worked really nicely to remove all the makeup that I had on my, well, not all of the makeup, but you know what I mean, because after this, you would go in and do a cleanse, but it removed most of my eye makeup. It did a great job of removing, you know, some of the makeup from my, you know, my facial makeup, like my foundation, concealer, and so on and so forth. I don't love the way that it feels and I don't love the texture. Also, I think it took longer for me to take my makeup off than if I just had a cleansing oil and you just kind of rubbed that in and, and massaged it in, uh, but not bad. However, these two together, if you wear as much makeup as I wear, this is not a good combination for a double cleanse. <laughs> this works really nicely if you use a cleansing oil. So I like to use the Bosha Makeup Breakup Cool Cleansing Oil to remove my makeup first. So this worked really nicely to get my makeup off and then this was nice afterwards. But if you use the Cetaphil oil makeup, oil free makeup remover and then this um, oil removing cleanser after, it's just not going to cut it. It's, it's, mm -mm. Maybe if you do like just like a CC cream or if you're just someone who does um, like a light powder or just like a little bit of concealer and a light powder, maybe that combo will work for you. But for the beat, 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 beat nah. <laughs> you know, I realized that in the last clip I was showing you the moisturizer because it was the closest thing to my hand and they're like similar in color. But clearly I meant that this combo together is not great for a double cleanse if you wear as much makeup as, as I do. Right. Moving on. So last but not least, the Cetaphil Pro Derma Control Oil Absorbing Moisturizer with Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 30. I will kick it to past me who try this out for the first time and then come back with my final thoughts. Okay, so it's September in New York City. It's still relatively warm. So this is something that I could use during this time. But typically as it gets colder, I probably wouldn't use an oil control type of moisturizer because I'm gonna need a little bit more when it gets colder. The texture on this feels really um, nice. It feels kind of similar to the cleanser in that it has like a kind of, almost like a watery texture. Here's what it looks like when it's rubbed out. Here's just like a little texture shot there. It's a little blown out, but you know, this is what it looks like 
as it rubs in. It feels really good on the skin though. It feels very lightweight. Now this is a moisturizer with sunscreen. So if you're someone who likes a multitasking product like that, this is gonna come into handy. Over the years, I've grown to appreciate using a separate sunscreen from my moisturizer because then it gives me more flexibility. During the year, um, as the seasons change and if I need to you know, switch my moisturizer out, um, it's much easier for me to you know, do that and then just, usually I could wear the same sunscreen year round and then just put that sunscreen on top. Plus, you know, it allows me to make sure that I'm evenly applying my sunscreen. I, you know, make sure that you're getting, you know, into any exposed areas of the scalp, behind the ears, the neck and the chest. I usually apply my body sunscreen on my neck and my chest because, you know, those are larger areas. Body sunscreen tends to be a little bit less expensive and it comes in bigger bottles than the facial sunscreens do. So that's like my little, you know, cost saving tip. But this feels really good. There's, it's very lightweight. You don't feel like there's anything on. And my skin looks and, and feels good, so. We'll get on with the rest of it. So the thing with this moisturizer, it's very lightweight. It, it blends in seamlessly into the skin. So you're not gonna, it's a chemical sunscreen. So you're not going to, you know, have that white cast. Although some chemical sunscreens can, but you know, this one doesn't. The actives in here are, are avabenzone, octylosate, octocrylene. See, I told you I don't like to be saying these ingredients. Y'all making me feel like I am smiling, embarrassing me. I'm like over here. Anyway, um, so my thing with chemical sunscreens um, versus mineral sunscreens. There are pluses and minuses for, e for each side. Some people are find chemical sunscreens to be irritating and mineral sunscreens are the better option. If you're someone with deeper skin and you're like, I would love a mineral sunscreen, but the options out there, like what's up with that? I got you. So make sure you check out my mineral sunscreen for dark skin playlist because I've tried out tons. And then check out my blog, which will be linked below because I have listed the best mineral sunscreens that I've tried so far. So you can get, you know, cut through some of the information. Although watch the videos because you know, it support your girl. Anyway, so I'm not someone who typically gets the irritation in the eyes from a chemical sunscreen. And a lot of times when you feel that like burning in your eyes, a lot of times it's because of the oxybenzone, but sometimes it can be the other chemical filters because wow, <laughs> this burned the ish out of my eyes, but I'll, I'll clarify like the, the exact thing. This moisturizer with SPF, I would say is probably better for light days. Like I have it on now, it didn't irritate my eyes at all, but I have not been like getting up and doing strenuous activity. Um, you know, I've been walking back and forth, putting on hair, makeup, and clothes and whatnot to film this video for y'all. Later on, depending on when Zara decides to ship my order, I may go to the store and pick it up and maybe film something else. It's a light day. However, the other day, I, you know, gyms opened in New York City, so I went to work out with my personal trainer with my mask on and everything, which wasn't too bad. I was actually able to breathe through it, you know, even with my asthma, but it's another story for another day. This thing, as soon as my, I started to sweat, ouch. <laughs> so I think what the issue is, because I obviously work out with suns with other chemical sunscreens on and I've never had that burn and there are similar chemical filters in each one. I think what the difference is with this one is because of the texture. This might be something that's more prone to kind of slide down like if you're sweating or if you've got like, a, I can't even say a lot of oil control, oh, a lot of oil breakthrough because uh, when I wore this throughout the day on a light day, I didn't feel that stinging even as my, you know, my natural oils came through. So I think it's more of the don't wear something like this if you're going to be sweating, you're going to the gym because ouch. I had to actually, because my trainer needed to um, do some other stuff with me after we worked out and I was like, girl, hold on, I need to go to the bathroom and go wash this mess off of my face and out of my eyes because I can't even see you right now. That's how much it was stinging. So I actually liked it, but as I mentioned before in another video, I find that sunscreens have to kind of go with your lifestyle as well. That's why there's so many sunscreens out there. So this would be more of like a light day kind of thing for when I go to the gym, like today I went to the gym, I put on my regular Olay Shine Control SPF 35. That was fine, but that has more of a thicker consistency. 
Um, it could be maybe something with the moisturizer sunscreen combo plus the texture of this that, that did that. But I've tried other moisturizer sunscreen combos that, that were chemical that didn't burn my eyes. So I, I think it's, it's a texture thing with that and sweat breakdown. So for light days, not for the gym. And then you might wear something like this and it, it's perfectly fine for you. To, it does nothing, so. So, overall thoughts, the Gentle Skin Cleanser, it was okay. For me, it was a little too basic, but that's just like a me thing. That's like a lifestyle preference kind of thing. I'm, I need a little bit more excitement than that, but not a bad cleanser, just not, you know, for me. Um, the Gentle Oil-Free Makeup Remover, this was nice. Not my first choice for removing makeup for me, myself, personally. I just prefer a cleansing oil or a cleansing balm. They work much faster at, you know, removing everything. And then my cleansing oils and cleansing balms work really well with any of the cleansers that I use in my routine. The oil control foam, actually the oil removing foam wash. I actually really like this. This is something that as someone with oily skin, who lives in a, an area that gets four seasons, I would only use this during the warmer months. I do find that, you know, in the colder months, I need something a little bit more and I don't want to, you know, that I told her, we already talked about the whole dehydrated oily skin thing being a thing and, you know, going into shock and producing more oil. I just rather use something a little more hydrating um, in the colder months. Not to say that this isn't hydrating, this felt like it really, did a good job of balancing out my skin, but I think in the winter time, I just want a little, a little more, I just want a little more. Then when it came to the um, oil absorbing moisturizer with SPF 30, this was really nice. Again, something that as someone with an oily skin who lives in an area that gets four seasons, I would only use this in the warmer months. You know, maybe if there was a fluke and it was like 75 degrees in December, you know, yeah, but I'd pull it out. I would only wear this on a light day. Like if I'm just like, I'm not moving around much. Like, you know, I'm probably running my errands because I did find that I could like do regular <laughs> basic things. Definitely not on a day when I'm working out at the gym. Definitely not because once I started to sweat and the um, sunscreen started to break down, it got in my eyes, it was stinging. I couldn't see my trainer. I was like, girl, where you at? Where'd you go? She's like, I'm right here. I'm like, but I can't see you because because the, the sunscreen broke down in my sweat and, and, and it's stinging. <laughs> so <laughs> proceed with caution, especially if you're someone who has sensitivity with uh, chemical sunscreens. So those are my thoughts. What are your thoughts? I wanna know, let me know in the comments. Have you tried any of these products? Um, would you try any of these products? What are your thoughts on Cetaphil as a brand? Let me know in the comments. If you wanted to see my thoughts on some CeraVe products, I did a quick, you know, real quick with Danielle video on that, so check that out. I would have to say just a quick, super quick, like on the surface comparison. Hmm, which one do I look better? I'd have to say I like the Cetaphil oil, oil absorbing products better than I liked um, the, the CeraVe products that I tried in that video. If it was between the Cetaphil Gentle Skin Cleanser and the CeraVe Gentle Cleanser that I tried, I tried the one that was for oily skin, I would for sure 100% go for the CeraVe. But if it was the CeraVe versus the Cetaphil with the oil absorbing, I would go for the Cetaphil. So hopefully that helps you out. You know, make sure you subscribe, follow me on social, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys. <laughs>